All right, so there's many things that I've learned in the industry of software engineering that I've been taught over time. These are things that have not, not necessarily been taught to me via books, but more so through experience. And I wanna share with you guys three of those things that I think are super important for being successful in this industry and really in most career industries as well. Some of these apply to multiple industries, but in specific to software engineering, I'll be giving you guys three tips today. Things that I've learned over time and through experience, but first I wanna cut my hair because your boy looking a little rough right now, so I'll see y'all in a bit. All right, so real quick, I forgot as I was editing this video, but shout out to Rick Coase for entering the coding challenge that I issued in that last video. Thanks so much for submitting. If you guys are not following Rick Coates on Instagram, here's his Instagram right here. I will throw it right here on the screen. Go ahead and check him out and follow him. But thanks so much, Rick Coates, for submitting the coding challenge. The app was very good. I did a couple bug fixes on it, but good job on that, man. Anyways, back to this video for y'all. Woo! Now that your boy done gotten fresh. As I mentioned before, there are three skills that I think are important to possess as a software engineer. And these are things that you learn through experience and over time. And the first of those skills is critical thinking. First and foremost, what is critical thinking? Critical thinking by formal definition is the objective analysis and evaluation of an issue in order to form a judgment. Now, how does this apply to us in software engineering, you may be asking? Well, anytime you're working on a new piece of software or building a new piece of software, you need to more or less exercise critical thinking in order to derive a solution to the problems that you encounter. To break this down a bit further, us as engineers need to understand the problems that we are trying to solve thoroughly. Once we have a firm understanding of the problems that we are trying to solve, the next step is to understand the tools that we have available to us to solve said problem. After that, we exercise critical thinking to use the tool, which is code in most cases, in order to solve the problem that's before us. Have you guys ever wondered, what is it that coding interviews are actually testing for? The obvious answer would be, well, Wayne, they're testing our coding ability, which is true. But if we dig a little bit further, we will see that coding interviews are actually testing our critical thinking ability. It is testing our ability to use code, the tool, in order to solve the problem that is presented to us. The second important skill or trait to possess as a software engineer is patience. Now, what do I mean when I say patience, you may be asking? Well, first off, patience with yourself when it comes to solving a particularly hard problem. And secondly, patience in the process of becoming a more skilled engineer. When it comes to patience for being able to derive a solution to a problem that you are stuck on, being able to take a step back from it can help out substantially. There have been many times in my career where I've been stuck on a problem and trying to brute force my way to a solution. And only when I took a step back and surrendered did the solution actually come to me. So have patience with yourself when it comes to solving particularly hard problems. On to my second point for why patience is important in this industry is you need to be patient with the process of becoming a more skilled engineer. There have been many young engineers I've encountered in my career that believe they are in a sprint when in actuality, this along with anything else that you are trying to become skilled at is a marathon. The truth is, is that none of us are ever done learning and your skill will increase at its own rate without you being too bothered about it. Your only concern here is that you are pushing yourself. And lastly, an important skill to possess as an engineer is understanding trade-offs. Now, in order to demonstrate what I mean by understanding trade-offs, I'm gonna present you guys with an analogy. Let's say I have a car, right? And I have five gallons of gas in this car, and I need to get to a destination that is 100 miles away. Now, the numbers I use in this demonstration are not realistic. Obviously, this is not how fuel consumption works in real life, but to illustrate trade-offs, hear me out. So, if I drive 100 miles per hour to get to my destination, I'll get there in one hour. But let's say if I drive an average speed of 100 miles per hour, I burn through my entire tank of gas. I burn through all five gallons of gas. Now, let's say I drive 50 miles per hour in this scenario. I'll get to my destination in two hours and I'll burn through two and a half gallons of gas. If I drive 25 miles per hour, just to keep things linear, I'll get to my destination in four hours and I'll burn through one and a quarter gallons of gas. After presenting you guys with all of this, you guys may be asking me, Wayne, what the hell does this have to do with trade-offs? But hear me out. If I drive there 100 miles per hour on average, I'll burn through my entire gas tank. If the destination is not a gas station, 
I will not have the ability to refuel my vehicle without ordering a tow or figuring out some other means in order to get my vehicle to a place where it can be refueled. Whereas if I drive at the slower rate of 50 miles per hour, I still have two and a half gallons left of gas. So I have the ability, assuming that a gas station is within range, to get to a gas station in order to refuel my vehicle. But let's say my destination is a gas station and I was just trying to optimize for time. Let's say I had like a pregnant wife in the car or something like that. Then, I don't know why I'm taking my pregnant wife to the gas station, but anyways, then at that point, right, we need to go to the gas station as fast as possible. So we drive 100 miles per hour on average, burn through an entire tank, refuel, and then head to the hospital. This is how understanding trade-offs kind of works if you guys are getting what I'm saying. What are we sacrificing when we drive as fast as possible? We're sacrificing fuel efficiency. There will be many times as a software engineer where you will have many solutions to a problem. And understanding which solution to use is strictly based on what your use case is and what the trade-offs are. Being able to select a solution based on trade-offs and based on the use case that you are solving for is an extremely important skill to possess as a software engineer. With that being said, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more content in the future, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.